Hey, what is up everybody? My name is Mark from Big Blue Laser Designs and my mission is to help beginning and busy laser owners create great things faster. Now today, if you are a brand new Glowforge owner, I'm gonna walk you through the steps of unboxing your Glowforge, getting it up on the table. Well, I'm not gonna help you get it up on the table. You're gonna do that by yourself. But you're gonna unbox it, put it in its place. I'm gonna help you connect to the internet so that you can make some great stuff. So we're going to jump right into this in just a moment. But after you get done, if you need more help or if you'd like some files to get started with, head over to BigBlueLaserDesigns.com and I've got several hundred different options for you to look at, things you can grab and start with. But let's put that off for now. Let's jump into unboxing that sucker so we can make some cool stuff. Let's go. I'm sure that like me, you looked at the dimensions of the Glowforge and you knew that it was going to be decent sized, but when the box arrives, it's going to seem even bigger than you thought. So here's your first important note. You're going to keep the box and all of the packaging because if you don't, it currently costs several hundred dollars to get a new one. All right, so step number one, you're going to, of course, open the box. Lay it flat on the floor. You're going to see that it's a two-part box. The top part is taped along the bottom edges, so get a box knife or scissors and cut that tape along the bottom edges. Then you'll be able to lift the top off. Dun dun da! It's so pretty! Next, you're going to remove the two pieces of foam on the left and the right sides, set those aside, and of course you're going to keep those. And then gently pull off the tape that keeps that plastic bag shut and open up the bag and tuck it around the sides because the next thing you're gonna do is lift up the Glowforge. Now stop for a minute and note this piece of paper that's around the button. It has the address that you go to to set up your Glowforge. So don't lose this, that's the next place you're gonna go after we physically set this machine in place. Now you're ready to lift it out of the box, grab a friend and each of you can stick your hands down in the side of the box and there's gonna be a place you can put your hands Gently lift it up onto the table, take the plastic bag off, and put the Glowforge into place. Okay, now you're going to remove the orange tape on the front that holds the lid shut. Then gently open the lid and remove the foam at the front and the white foam that's underneath. You may have to work it back and forth a little bit to get it out. Next, remove the gray foam that's at the back and then the white foam that's underneath that. There is a foam lid that goes over a foam container there and inside that container is your laser head. So as with all the pieces here, treat that very carefully as you take it out. You'll also see an orange foam plug that goes in there. Leave it in there for now, but we're gonna take it out later. And then look back up in that foam section. You'll see two items a blue lens removal tool, and a lens wipe. Don't lose that removal tool because you're going to need it later as well. Now go ahead and remove that last white piece of foam from the back. Again, you may have to work it a little bit to get it out. Next, we're going to remove that piece of orange tape that's connected to the flat white cable there under the gantry. Remove that gently and put the cable back where you found it for the moment. Once you've done that, you're going to push firmly down on that flat plastic orange piece and it will pop out. Set that aside, keep that as well. And now when you look underneath the gantry, you're going to see two orange thumb screws. Unscrew both of those completely and again, keep those as well. Once you've removed those, you're going to see that there are two flat rubber pieces that are sitting underneath the gantry wheels on either side. Gently push the gantry backwards while holding on to the rubber piece and you see that they will become released once the gantry rolls off of them. Now we're going to get ready to put in the crumb tray. I want you to notice that there are four indentions on the bottom of the Glowforge. Those are where the feet of your crumb tray sit when it's inserted properly. Make sure that you've opened the front door completely and then gently move your crumb tray all the way in and make sure that the four feet are sitting firmly in those four slots. Once you've seated the tray, you can close the front door. I'm going to insert the laser head. Let me give you a quick tour of that. On the top, 
there's a lid that opens with magnets on it where you'll see the top mirror. Then when you look on the bottom, you'll see that orange foam plug. We're going to remove that now, but keep it. And then you'll see that there are several different lenses on the bottom that you're going to clean from time to time and a lens on the left side. Next, you'll want to find that flat white cable, pull it out gently, and then connect it in that slot on the back of the laser head gently but firmly by giving it a little push and you'll feel it click when it slides into place. To place the laser head on the gantry where it belongs, you're going to see that on the bottom of the head there are some magnets and then there's this metal plate here. When you seat it properly, it's going to connect directly to that plate with those magnets and you'll feel it slide into place. Let me show you a couple of other features before we go further. When you open the door, don't open it all the way up. Open it about 80% like you see here because we don't want to stress out the cable that's connected there at the hinges. The front door also opens and closes. And if you don't get that closed properly, the Glowforge will not let you do anything until you get it closed. This next part is really important. You can gently move the gantry back and forth as you see here but only when the power is off. You can also move the head back and forth, but again, only when the power is off. If you ever accidentally move the gantry or the laser head when the power is on, go ahead and turn the machine off, reboot it, and start over, because if you move it when it's powered on, it will tend to lose its place and bad things could happen. Next, we're gonna connect the vent hose at the back of the machine. This is the one that will connect to the back of the Glowforge and then go to your vent out of your window. You will see here that I have a four inch to six inch adapter on mine because I have a six inch hose that goes out of the wall in my room. In most cases, you will use the supplied hose clamp and the four inch vent hose and connect it to the back of the exhaust fan there on the Glowforge. I know a lot of people like to see how everybody has their setup, so here's mine. I've got a six inch hose that goes up and out a six inch hole in the wall above. Now we're ready to plug in the Glowforge and turn it on. So just attach the power cord in the back there and flip the switch on that's right next to the plug. Now we're finally ready to start connecting this thing to the internet. So go to your computer and type in setup.glowforge.com. And then you'll see a page like this that says unboxing your Glowforge at the top, which we've already done. And then scroll all the way down to the bottom and then click the red continue button. At this point, if the button on your Glowforge is not glowing teal, then push it and hold it for 10 seconds and it should start glowing teal. And then you can press the continue button. On this next page, it's going to show you that your Glowforge is now broadcasting a temporary Wi-Fi access point. So what you want to do is go to your Wi-Fi button. On a Mac, it's up at the top. On a PC, it's down at the bottom right. And on that list of available Wi-Fi's, you're going to see one called Glowforge Wi-Fi. So let me pause here for just a second because some of you may be looking on your Wi-Fi list and you don't see it there. Well, I discovered that on a Mac, and I assume it's the same on a PC, if I click Network Preferences up here, then it's going to bring up a screen where it shows some network preferences. And if I click the down arrow, I will see the Glowforge on the list there and I can click it from there. Once it connects, I can then click back to my other Glowforge setup screen and it should say, huzzah, your computer is connected to your Glowforge. At this point, I want to pause again to explain something because some people get hung up here. From here forward, your computer and your Glowforge are never going to be connected to each other again. This entire process was simply to let the Glowforge connect to your computer temporarily, find out how to use your Wi-Fi to get to the internet, and then from here forward, your Glowforge will be going directly to the internet through your home Wi-Fi, and your computer will never show the Glowforge being connected again. So just in case you're confused by that, don't look for that in the future because they will not be connected from here forward. So your computer and Glowforge have been connected to this point, and now we're gonna choose our Wi-Fi from the list on the right to tell the Glowforge how to connect to the internet. 
If you don't see it on the right side, click the refresh button and then you should see it and you can select it, type in your password and then click connect. Once it's connected, the last thing to do is for it to automatically connect your computer back to your home Wi-Fi. If that doesn't happen automatically, you'll need to do it manually, which in that case, all you do is click on your Wi-Fi options and choose your home Wi-Fi from that list once again. This last step is kind of fun because you get to name your Glowforge. You can type any name that you want, and this is the name that will pop up in the top right corner whenever you go to your dashboard. Also, if you at any point in the future have more than one Glowforge, which we do here, it helps to have separate names so you know which one you're currently using or logging into. So you'll type the name that you want up in the top there. And then if you also want to add another user uh, to your Glowforge, like I do here, I've got a business partner. I add his email address there and then click Save Changes. And that's it. You are connected and ready to start using your Glowforge. At this point, I highly recommend that you click that red button that says, see the tutorials and work through those before you really jump into anything else. Otherwise, you can click head to your dashboard and you can get going there as well. But again, I highly recommend do not skip the tutorials. They are totally worth it. You did it. You connected it and you're ready to create some cool stuff. Now, the first thing you want to do again is to go to the support section in the Glowforge website and go to the learn by doing lessons. They're set up so that you can learn how the Glowforge works and walk through each step. And that whole resource section there under support is full of all kinds of great information. So definitely don't skip that. But also if you need any other help, feel free to message me. You can hit me up on my website at bigbluelaserdesigns.com. You can go to Facebook at facebook.com slash bigbluelaserdesigns. I've even got a Facebook group that you can join that's full of thousands of people, many of whom are brand new users just like you. So don't feel like you're alone at all. We are here to help. Reach out if you need anything. But until then, have a great time and go make some cool stuff.